The next section that we're going to go over is about exact equations, um, which is another type of specific first order differential equation that we're going to learn the method for solving. And before we get into the steps and examples, we're going to do a quick example that's more to motivate um, using this approach and, and less about how we actually do it. So real quick, um, I just want you to think about these two different approaches. to solve this ODE that I'm about to write. And it's dy dx is equal to minus y over x. I'll go ahead and split my page in half so you can see the two different examples. Um, and on the left side, I'm going to solve it as a separable equation um, because it is. So I can move all the y's to one side and all the x's to the other. And then I would just go ahead and integrate. Um, so then my solution I get from integrating dy over y, setting it equal to the integral of minus dx over x, um, which gives me natural log of y is equal to minus natural log of x plus a constant that takes care of the constants on both sides. And then I could go ahead and solve for y um, by taking uh, exponentials of both sides. So I've got e to minus ln x plus c is e to ln of 1 over x times e to c. So that's just going to be some unknown constant times 1 over x. I went through that very fast because this isn't a section on separable equations, but I just wanted you to see that this is a differential equation. You already know how to solve a particular way. And now I want to kind of show you a different way that we could have done it. Um, instead of matching the x's and y's to themselves, I'm going to actually like cross them with each other this time. So I'm going to rearrange the x to be with the y and the dx to be with the minus y, um, sort of the opposite of what I did on the left side. Or getting everything onto one side of an equation, I've got 0 is equal to x dy plus y dx. And sort of thinking more like the section we did on um, linear equations, I can recognize that this is a differential form of a product rule. Um, so I'm actually going to write that here. So it's a differential of the product x, y. So think I would take x, and leave it, and then take the derivative of y. And then I would add that to leaving y the way it is and considering the derivative of x. But here I'm using differentials instead of derivatives. But if we go ahead and try to integrate both sides of this, um, I could have like integral of 0 dx is the integral of dxy. Um, so I would just get some constant is equal to xy, um, where the constant on the left takes care of the constant that would also be on the right. Or I arrive at the same solution, y is equal to c over x. Um, and so both approaches work, and you're familiar with the one on the left, but the one on the right, um, was obtained by rearranging our ODE into what's called an exact equation, where we have some m that can depend on x and y times dx, plus some n that can depend on x and y times dy, set that equal to 0. So in the example we did right here, um, it was, was kind of backwards. Um, 
So my m was y dx plus my n is x dy. So m equals y, n equals x would be how you see that in the exact equation form. And then there's one extra rule that the equation has to satisfy for it to be exact. Um, we need the um, partial derivative of m with respect to y and the partial derivative of n with respect to x to be the same. And then as long as that's true, um, we have an exact equation. And since on the bottom that's a little close to the edge, I'm going to go ahead and write those partial derivatives here, just in case it's hard for you to see on your device. So I've got partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to partial derivative of n with respect to x. Um, so for the example we were just talking about, um, we had 0 is equal to x. Well, it's okay, I'll leave it this way. x dy plus y dx. So our y was our m and our x was our n. And so we can go ahead and check that dm over dy is the partial derivative with respect to y of y, which is 1. And dn dx is the partial derivative with respect to x of x, which is also 1. So since I got the same answer, that second condition is satisfied that the partial derivative of n with respect to x has to be the same as the partial derivative of m with respect to y. Um, to kind of understand why we have this condition, you can think about um, mixed derivatives. from calculus 3. So requiring that the derivatives are um, the same, is going to make sure that m and n correspond to differential forms of the same function. So kind of um, m is going to be related to derivatives in x, n is going to be related to derivatives in y, so checking this condition is making sure that the mixed derivatives are equal, which was something that you wanted to be true of functions in Calc 3, if you remember that. It may have been a while. Um, so I'd like to tell you the steps to solve this type of equation next. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here and then we'll do the steps in the next video just to make sure that there's plenty of time.